So it's a pleasure to be here this afternoon, speaking to the best and brightest about uh, some very new tech, which I only just learned about a few weeks ago myself, in fact, thanks to Dario, who first invited me to speak and then told me I would be speaking with Alex about VR, which I knew nothing about, <laughs> nor had I ever met Alex. So we spoke on the phone, and I explained uh, what Vox does, Alex ex explained what Loom does, and we said we should do a panel, we should actually load some data into the Loom technology platform uh, and uh, talk about what uh, we think of that. So, Before we uh, can kind of show you the data, I should probably explain what Box does so you know what it is you're looking at. So I'll take a few minutes and do that, and Alex will talk about Loom, and then we'll actually show you what the uh, Box data looks like in a virtual reality model. So very briefly, Vox essentially a uh, big data analytics company. And if you're familiar with the term KOL identification, KOL mapping, we kind of do that on steroids. So why stop at mapping the top several hundred people when you can just map the entire therapeutic area that you're interested in and then help your clients engage with that to find whatever kind of engagement partner they need across the product lifecycle. So a lot of clients in the audience, you probably don't know you have our data, but you do. And all of you, as we've talked about in this conference, are continuously in the business of trying to understand your stakeholders, you know, all the interconnections between them, how they, uh, what their needs are, and at the same time engage with those stakeholders to impact their opinions and behavior. So it's that understanding of the external marketplace and our customers and all the stakeholders that really drives the success of our products in the market. And the problem companies have is that this is generally the kind of tool we use when we think about who we're going to engage, right? We think about people in a very kind of narrow way. We reduce them to rows and columns of individuals with individual attributes, whether those are prescription volume, treatment volume, numbers of publications, etc. And then we sort and filter and we come up with a short list of target people that we want to engage for whatever it is. And we go out and engage with those people usually in a very binary way. And the problem with this is that there's no context here about how these people know each other, let alone how they are connected to the entire disease area, therapeutic area that we're really ultimately trying to impact. <laughs> you really have to hit this. <laughs> Come on. So, you know, beyond just customers, we're really trying to understand the interactions between all the different kinds of stakeholders that are involved with our product. So the way Vox solves this problem and what the data you're going to see is we apply a methodology that is exactly the same methodology that government intelligence organizations use to understand terrorist networks. And I know this because prior to my 20 years in pharma, I spent 15 years as a government intelligence officer where I did strategic counterterrorism. So when you look at a terrorist network, uh, you don't just profile individuals. That's not really very effective. What you look at is the activities of the individuals who are part of that community. And through those activities, the communications, the way people work together, the way resources move across that organization, you can create a map of how that community of people actually works. And you can visually see, just looking at the, uh, you know, the graphic here, clearly there are nodes of people who are connected to activities or institutions, whatever those might be, that you can target and make more effective use of your resources by impacting you know, that entire uh, cluster of people, whatever that is. So we've taken that same methodology, we've applied it to life science data so that we can understand the interactions across an entire disease community looking at scientific uh, data, you know, publications, clinical trials, as well as commercial data, referrals, uh, shared patients, that kind of thing. It's very tedious. Okay, very quickly, uh, it's a straightforward data approach. There's nothing subjective about what you can see. It's all um, very data-driven. So we, we define the community with uh, the client. In this case, I think we're looking at atopic dermatitis. We decide what data we're going to pull in. In this case, we're just going to look at uh, scientific publications data. We kept the data set pretty small uh, for this proof of concept. 
Uh, in reality, you could include any of the types of data you've all been talking about today, and uh, it would visualize the same way. Then what we do is we extract all the relational links from that data. So in this case, that's basically co-authorship, uh, maybe, maybe some conference data in there as well, where we have conference abstract uh, co-presentations. And then we map that entire community so you can literally see the structure of the community. We apply analytics to that, social network analytics, to figure out, based on people's relationships, who are the most influential people across that community. We figure out what it is that they're involved with as far as the, the activities, and we drop all of that into a visualization platform. And that's where we run into the visualization problem, because when we do the math, on social network, uh, the social network analytics to figure out who the key influencers are, we come up with three-dimensional measures that reflect where that person fits in the structure of that community, and that's how we determine their importance using uh, mathematical measures. But when we visualize the data as shown in this very nice Gethy uh, image, which is not a, a commercially viable product because it's not supported, but we can create these great images. Nevertheless, they're two-dimensional. I'm looking at it from one perspective. I can't really rotate that and see it. Uh, from the other side and explore it, you know, in a more intuitive way. I can't drill into that. I can also take, you know, our data as we do and drop it into other commercially available platforms like Tableau or Click, or in, in this case, IQVIA, where I can select a manageable number of nodes. You know, some of the data sets we have are half a million nodes and tens of millions of relational links. So in commercially available software, you can generally only visualize a very small number of nodes and just a fraction of the connections. So that's where Loom comes in with a technology solution that really allows you to engage with that entire data set. <laughs> right button. Okay, cool. What do I have? Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm Alex. I'm the CEO of Loom. Um, so in a nutshell, Loom is an intuitive data exploration visualization and collaboration platform. So effectively what we do is that we help company make data or their complex raw data instantly understandable for teams globally. So what this means is that we make it tangible. And we do this, if you will, by creating a virtual room where the data exists. And using virtual reality, we can then, from anywhere in the world, access this room. So this is an example of um, what it looks like inside our platform. So this data here is the top half of a white blood cell. And the blue guy that you see there is Dr. Alex Carr. Uh, so this data is streamed straight out of his microscope into Lou. And what he's saying here is that there's an awkward distribution of the proteins over the finger one of the fingers of this cell. He can record his voice, his hand movement, and use his kind of human storytelling abilities to share this as an insight with all of his sister labs across the world in the UK and the US. So I guess, like, why or how can this be, um, you know, beneficial to people? Well, it works with, it can work with any data. It works particularly well with highly dimensional numerical data, like the one that we, uh, uh, the case study we did with, uh, with Tony and his team. Um, these virtual room where the data exists means that I can share an insight or have an insight about my data, record myself, and get whatever is in my mind into someone else's mind on the other side of the world instantly. And this improves the productivity of teams globally over huge data sets, right? And finally, and this is not to be understated, is that it makes data engaging for the stakeholders. And this, you know, making data human, really, like make, the way that we explore the world from a very young age is by moving in this environment. And making data tangible means that you can create a relationship to it. You make it memorable. And this is extremely powerful for clients and stakeholders. Uh, so a bit about us. We have three founding partners, including the University of Cambridge. Uh, we started developing the algorithm two years ago. Uh, we launched some early versions of the software. Um, so I have over 2,000 users 
of these early versions, and since the beginning of April, we've launched 50 company licenses and are looking for, and you can see we, we work across different verticals here, but looking for new partnerships to uh, explore these virtual rooms. So why does this, um, why is this, why are we doing this, right? Well, data, making data digestible and insights actionable, you know, across teams and continents is a very inefficient process. Basically, what we do is that we're creating, we have sensors and algorithms and analytics platform which are generating highly dimensional data. And we have to cram this down into a format that can be collaborated around by email or over the phone. And this is the big problem, right? This takes a lot of time. What we're ending up doing now is that we're adapting the content to the platforms we're using and not the other way around. And Oh. And so this is what we do, right? We've adapted the platform to our content, to today's content, um, by creating these collaborative workspaces where we can share insights instantly. So the process, um, we just uh, load in the raw data, so either out of an analytics platform or out of sensors directly, um, and then we can explore it using your VR headsets, and then these insights can be shared inside a virtual environment or as videos in um, normal traditional 2D formats. The value of this is again that we can share these insights and connect different human minds across the world instantly. Uh, so yeah, thanks. This was a intro <laughs> and I think we're going yeah, to go ahead into the demonstration. Talk so for the demonstration we've taken a, a Vox data set around atopic dermatitis and uh, I should thank also Apure Base and uh, Carolina Martin for providing some of the data there, our EU uh, data and GDPR partner. Um, so their data went into Vox, Vox's data went into Loom. And I'm going to show you an animation. Unfortunately, we can't connect the live platform and play with it here, but um, we're going to just show you the animations. So yeah, this is, this is quite, you know, like this presentation <coughs> could live forever within a virtual environment where we could actually get these 3D data narratives and presentation and capture all the complexity of the information and make this you know, understandable for teams or clients. Or so. so this is the same kind of data set we saw in the Gephi image, but now we can rotate it. We can actually dive into it. You can see those little clusters of people that are kind of working together around something or maybe the same organization. We don't know exactly what that is, but in the platform, we'd be able to click on that and see you know, what exactly is going on there. We can see people we maybe know or are interested in and follow their connections across the network. So it's quite an interesting way of just exploring, again, the entire data set. And from a, a, a pattern recognition and intuition uh, perspective, you know, what I initially thought when I looked at the big image is of uh, cases where we had a client, for example, who was focused on the uh, treating community around their disease, but when we presented the data, we saw a lot of pathologists, and they didn't initially recognize the importance of pathologists until they saw the structure of that community and the fact that those people were very important, but you can kind of see the cluster. Go to the next uh, video. You kind of see that cluster in the lower part there it might be something like that, some subspecialty group that maybe needs a separate platform. So the nodes in yellow are the people we've identified as the key influencers, the people who are important not because of necessarily what they know, but because of who they know, who they have the ability to access, or the things they have the ability to influence. And we can uh, identify those in network analytics, and we can extract those and view them separately. So there's a separate community of just the key influencers in this community. And again, we can kind of explore how those people are connected, maybe look at who we're engaging around a particular program, and see you know who else they're connected to, or what uh, relationships there we might want to leverage in putting together things like advisory boards or um, other sorts of work groups across the uh, customer community. Next one. So another thing you can do here is kind of zoom back out. So the process of kind of zooming out, looking at the big picture, the structure, uh, the shapes, seeing the different groups just intuitively through human pattern recognition, uh, kind of exploring the data and then the ability to again zoom in 
and explore specific relationships, I think is quite interesting and much better than in the two-dimensional platforms we uh, currently work with at Vox. Yeah, I think it also Good. allows people to, you know, go through this research and exploration process of the data themselves, rather than just providing them, you know, kind of like what it actually looks like at the end. And going through that research um, phase makes it quite interesting. Go to the next one. Oh, so, so you can also do, uh, mathematically, you can look at how well an individual is connected across the network. So as a metric of influence, you can look at a person's, we call it reach, how many people and who they're connected to. And you can do basically math to kind of score a person's influence within any, any part of that community. And you can do that for an individual. We're looking at, at individuals' uh, first and second degree network connections here. So they're cumulative reach, uh, you can also look at that for, for any given group, maybe your group of uh, advisory board members, for example, and kind of calculate metrics uh, based on uh, the overall connection of those people across the community. And you can aggregate data around that as well, whether it's prescription volume or uh, whatever type of data you're looking at here to see kind of what that group encompasses. And I think the last one is showing this is just uh, UK, so just the people from the UK who are part of the data set. You see the few yellow uh, influencers there, and I think the red ones are an institution, so you can extract again using the same kinds of filters uh, that we're used to, extract any sub-community or group that you're interested in, and kind of explore, you know, who's at that institution, how are they connected, how are they connected to maybe people we know that are outside that institution, so now you can think about engagement in a more strategic way as opposed to just a binary working down a list, you know, calling on individuals per se. You can actually have a craft a strategy for engaging with any part of the community that is important to you. Okay, just go there. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I'm sorry we had to show all this through animations because when you actually put the headset on, and this is one of uh, my key conclusions, not having worked with this before, but you really experience the data in a different way, beyond just the ability to see those patterns and explore th the data set in you know, a very pragmatically functional way, there's something very primal. <laughs> we were talking about this last night, in the way your brain registers the data when you're actually inside it, because I think as human beings, we live in three dimensions. And it's like the difference between looking at a photo of a place and, and being in, in the place. And when you look at data, even data that way, even when it's conceptual for me, it somehow feels differently in my brain. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I think it, totally, I think it's around, you know, a, a big part of uh, being immersed in a new medium, especially with something quite abstract like information, is around memorization of the data and, uh, being able to do that, I think, you know, being immersed in information does uh, give you this edge um, over a traditional a 2D platform. Right. So we are looking forward to going the next step and uh, uploading a, a full data set. So when we click those nodes, we can then see all the connected information. The individual profile will pop up, maybe institutional uh, aggregated data, that kind of thing. And the idea of being able to navigate an entire data set and access all those different data streams in one portal, right, is quite uh, attractive. And I think will be attractive to our customers, right, as opposed to, again, having to sort of filter and look at all those data pieces in, uh, separately, right? So we actually finished 58 seconds under time. So if someone has a burning question. All right, well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. I hope you found it as interesting as I did.